All right, hey guys. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you. What do I have over here? Huh. Anyway, today I am going to be showing you how to quickly and easily transfer files to and from your Android phone, like for automating backups or for just pushing over like a song or a file you want to flash. This is much easier than you know plugging in your phone and, I mean, yeah, opening up this because you, you'll see when you normally go and open up like this. Sometimes it takes a while to load all the files and folders and stuff, and it has to build the list, which takes a while. So if you don't want to do that, you can make a script. This will take a little bit of time the first time, but after that, it will make it much faster for you to transfer files. You just literally just drag and drop, and it will push it to your device in whichever folder you want. The first thing you'll need is to have the Android SDK installed. As you can see, I have it. You can download it here. Um, just go to this page. I'll have it linked below, uh, and then click on SDK only. I'll scroll down a little bit. And then you want to use the second link under SDK tools that will give you a zip file. Once it's done downloading, it should look like where'd it go? It should look like this. I'm gonna go right ahead and put this in a folder. You just want to this folder this inside a zip file. Just put that anywhere you want. Just remember what folder you have it in. I will go ahead and put it in a folder. Uh, let's see. I find a folder I put in last time. Alright, so here's the folder I used last time. It's documents slash Android. Let's go ahead and delete all this since I'm not going to need it anymore. Alright, and now we're going to drag and drop this folder from inside the zip file into the folder we made. Again, you can put this anywhere you want. It's usually best to have it in a folder that doesn't have any spaces in it. As you can see, this path is C, users, David, documents, Android. You don't want to have like Android space SDK. You can but it may cause a few problems down the line. We'll see. Alright. Just copying the files in may take a little bit of time while deleting the old ones so that we can minimize this. Alright, now I'll go ahead and open your folder. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to register ADB. Uh, this will make it so you can access ADB anywhere. You don't have to change your folders or whatever. Because normally what will happen is if you open up uh, command prompt and type in ADB, press enter, it says, we all know what that is. So you need to have that registered. So what you need to do is you need to find out where ADB is installed or uh, stored. It should be in SDK Windows slash platform. Uh, sorry, tools. That was platform tools. They keep changing it like every version. Uh, where do they put it? Uh, I think we actually have to run the SDK manager first. It's been a while since I've had to install this. Okay. So then you go over here. It says Android SDK's tools is installed. I just build its list. All the folders are currently empty. Alright. Okay, let's go over here. Android SDK tools is checked. So we platform tools is what we need and a build tools is already checked. They already check what we have. Uh, you can uncheck Android 5.0 SDK since we're not going to be actually building anything. Uh, let's just leave it. Yeah, okay, let's leave it unchecked. Do right and click install. If you already have ADB installed, you don't need this step. So this is just for if you don't have ADB installed at all. Uh, yeah. All of this video timestamps, you can look in the description for where the part is if you already have ADB installed. Okay, as you can see now, we actually have ADB tools since we actually had to download the things. So while this is going, we're going to go ahead and continue on the process. Basically, just do what I suggested. Go ahead and go into here and install the two things that did not come with. Uh, it's downloading new stuff. We can get started while it is since we have ADB. 
So remember, once you've started that installation process, you'll have a new folder called Platform Tools. This is what we need. It has Fast Boot, which is for something else, which we're not going to go into in this video, and ADB, that's the main thing. So you double click up here, or if you're on Linux or Wit Mac, just get, go ahead and get the path. All right. <clears throat> Although this tutorial is obviously going to be more set up for Windows. Go ahead and copy that. So you right click and then copy. Then you want to uh, add it as an environmental variable. So you click on your start button and you click on computer. If you're running Windows 8, it might be a little bit different. So if you're running on Windows 8 or a different version, just open up my computer like this. Right click and then you go to properties. You get something that looks like this. And then you'll want to click on advanced system settings. And you'll want to go to environmental variables. And remember, this is only if you do not, if you type in ADB here and it gives you this error, that's when you'll need this step. If, you, if it gives you a uh, program starts running, then that means that you already have this set up, which you probably don't if you're watching this video. But anyway, uh, here is where you'd type it if you wanted it to show up for every, if just you. Like if you, if you have multiple users on the computer and you don't want to mess with their stuff, you double click this, go to the very end, put a semicolon, and then press control V. If you want to do it for all the users or you're the only user on your computer, what you can do is go into system variables, find path, should be here, and then do the exact same thing. Press N to go to the very end, semicolon, and then paste. This will install it for all the users. If it's just your computer, it doesn't matter. I say go ahead and do this. Press OK. Press OK again. And press OK again. And close this. Open it back up, type in ADB, and ta-da, we have this program run. So this, that means we finished the first step. Right now we have ADB set up and installed and properly, um, I don't know what the right word is, but properly set up for, so we can access it anywhere. That's the first step. All right, next step is we're gonna make a script that allows us to pull files from our device or make files on it. So to make any folder anywhere, uh, where's my test folder? Alright, so in here we're going to make a new script. So how you do that is just open up Notepad. Notepad. Now we're going to just uh, start typing. First thing you want to type is echo off. If you want, you can make it another color. Uh, here's an example. I have my default color as green, but if I want a different color, I can see color like. And then you say, let's see what the uh, options are. After color, if you type zero for black, and then like A for light green. That means you'd have black on light green. So this is just a thing that's not super necessary. Like A. Oops. I already have zero on light green. So you do like gray or whatever. And then basically, if whatever you type here will change the color of the text. If you, if you want to have it like show that it's a script or whatever. Uh, it's not necessary for this next line, but if you wanted to, you could do it that way. So if you wanted to have white, make it look a little bit less obvious, you could do white background because the first one's background so seven for white with black text is zero that makes it ooh uh, white is supposed to be seven bright white is what we need to say. so if you did F0 on this next line it makes it look like it's notepad so it doesn't so if you have a bunch of people walking around your computer you don't want them freaking out to you open a uh, script this will make it look less creepy I'll show you what I mean as we move on Let's just do this just for example, F0. Alright, next line, this is where we need to do the fancy stuff. This time we're going to be calling ADB. ADB. That's lowercase. Push. And then we want to have our file. So our file will be stored as, whenever we drag and drop something on here, it's counted as a variable called 1. So what we want to do is do like this, percent 1. That means whatever file is drag and dropped on here. And then we want to say where we want to store it. So um, the most common place would be SD card, which is slash SD card slash. Um, but if you want to make it in your music folder, your downloads folder, your install folder, you just put it here. Music or download or whatever. I'm just going to use SD card for example. All right, now let's go ahead and save. And uh, you, if you wanted to, you could put pause at the end so you can see if there's any errors, but we don't need that. Um, Let's just go ahead and say, we'll just do pause for now. So I'll show you what it, what I mean. All right, and let's go ahead and save this. 
right? Let's move it back. All right, so now we're in the right folder. Click uh, all files and then save it, whatever file name you want, but you have to have the proper extension. So I'm gonna call this copy. Remember, no, it's best to have no space. This guy can mess things up. Copy to SD, and then you have to end it in dot cmd or dot bat. Both do the same thing. Let's do dot cmd. All right. Now we have it right here. Now, how you can check what's on your SD card right now is you can go uh, adb shell ls slash sd card and that will show me a list of all the stuff I have on my SD card right now so yeah so let's make a new file just for example you don't have to create you can copy whatever file you want to your SD card but I'm gonna call one called zzzzz.txt now let's drag and drop it and see if it works and let's press any key to continue because that was at the very end all right, so that, that's what a pause does. The pause makes it pop up or press any key to continue. So now let's do the exact same command again, adb shell ls slash sd card. And now we can see the um, sd card now has a file called zzz.txt. It was able to successfully put that file on the sd card by just pushing it. What may make it a little bit more easy for you to see is uh, if you edit this again and you say you can put a uh, come something else up here. If you want, you can just delete the pause and it will just disappear when it's done. So that will make it a lot less, you know, so you don't have to press enter every single time, just save that. That works as well. So for pooling, that will be a little bit more difficult. For pooling, we'll have to know what file we're getting ahead of time. Or you can grab an entire folder at once. So, for example, uh, do I have any folders on here that don't have any, much in them? Okay, I'm going to make a new folder on my phone right now. I'm using ES File Explorer. You probably won't be able to see this very well. Um, let's make a new folder. New folder. As you see here, you can't see it. That's what I was expecting. Okay. Call it Z test. All right, now let's see if we can go ahead and oh yeah, fix the size. Oops, because I unplugged it. If you if your device isn't plugged in or you don't have the drivers, you'll get that error. Well, I'm just gonna give it a second. You also have you have USB debugging on your device. I forgot to say that. Otherwise, all this ADB stuff won't work. Alright, so it's not actually showing it because it's too high up, but I actually do have a folder with that name. I don't remember how to set it so you can resize it. Okay, so now that we know we have a folder called ZTest, you could use this for titanium backup too if you wanted, but I have way too much stuff in my titanium backup folder. So. Here's what you would need to do. You need to do file, new, oh, no, sorry, we go to back in notepad. You can delete everything that's in here if you want, or you can just leave the first two lines in. And what we do is we say adb pool, and then you want to actually have a path to the folder, slash sd card, which means we're looking on the sd card, slash test, or z test, and that's the folder I just made. And if you want to pull the whole file folder, you can. And we want to pull it to, or you can just say a file name. For instance, if I wanted to bring like text test.txt, um, I do test.txt here. But I want to try to bring the entire folder in. So I have to do entire folder and save it inside of right here. So I can just copy this. Or you can manually type the folder you want to save it to. And remember, when you're typing in stuff for the Android path, you have to have your slashes going this way. For Windows, your slashes go this way. So we're copying from Android, so this direction slash, to Windows, this direction slash. 
and let's see what happens. Make sure you save as a different file. Copy from SD. Save. And this one, since we don't have a, we don't, we're not drag and dropping anything. You can just run it normally. And when we're testing, the best thing to do is to have a pause at the end. So if we got any errors, we can see it. Otherwise, it would just close instantly. Start out with a pause. All right, one file pulled, and it pulled the file out of the folder. See, so it says SD card so slash test slash high and it moved it to this folder. So there we go. This is the file we made on our device. It was completely empty. And now it's on our computer. So you're able to pull every file that was in there. If we had more, it would have pulled more. But that's how you pull a file. So pretty easy. Um, if you, since you're done, we know there's no more errors. We can actually go in and go back and edit and take out the pause line. Since basically what this does is it tells it to pull. This pause tells us to be able to see if there's any errors. Now that we know there's no errors, we can take this out. Now, if you come this far after having a problem before, uh, you need to have ADB debugging installed. Uh, sorry, ADB um, enabled in uh, in your phone. And there's a bunch of tutorials. Just look up your phone and say ADB debugging. Normally, what you have to do, all you have to do is just go to uh, development options. If you have a newer phone, you actually have to enable it. So just look up how to enable USB debugging, and you'll be good to go. Then you'll be able to use this. If it says device not online or you can't find the drivers, then you'll need to go to get this package file. Uh, where is it? Here you go. Here's the package. Google USB driver. Uh, it says I already have it installed, but you just go ahead and click here. And then you click install package. Since I already have it installed, it says delete one package, and we I don't want to delete it. So that's how you get the drivers for ADB. I probably should have put that at the beginning of this video, but it's actually at the end. So sorry about that. Um, if you want to actually start developing for Android, there's a whole bunch more packages in here, but we're not using them in this video. I just want to give you guys a basic overview of how to, you know, use ADB to make copying stuff a little bit easier. And full disclosure, I just want to kind of show off my new webcam because I just want to see how the quality looks on YouTube, even with it kind of small. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm actually probably not going to actually publish it to my subscribers. I'm just going to have it up there in case anyone is interested in finding it. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys later, and bye.